So I've been thinking, the past few days haven't been the greatest. Pandemic, coronavirus going on right now, COVID-19 for those people. There's no sports going on right now, which means I can't work. People are going to the grocery store and fighting over toilet paper. And so today I thought would be the perfect day to kind of start up my YouTube channel and bring you my first ever video on this channel. So today we're gonna get right into it and go over what's in my camera bag in 2020. So starting off with the camera body, we got the Canon 5D Mark IV. Uh, I recently picked up this guy back in December um, and I use it for everything, everyday life, uh, shooting sports, shooting music, shooting portraits. Anything I need to shoot, I can depend on this guy to go in and into my event, my sporting event, anything I need, and this guy will kind of get the job done. Uh, only complaint is the amount of frames per second it can shoot. It, ca it can't compete with that Sony A9 or the Canon 1DX. Um, but hopefully in the future, the EOS R5 kind of looks like a good camera to pick up, so I have my eyes on one of those. So. For now, Canon 5D is my body. No complaints about it, it gets the job done. Um, I've only used it for about three months now and I've already gotten some amazing results with it. Um, and so yeah, this is my kind of main go-to body for now. Moving on to my backup body, we got the Canon 6D here. I've used it pretty much all of my career up until now. Uh, as you can see, the LCD screen at the top is kind of cracked. Uh, the glue and everything's fallen off and all my kind of crazy shots that I've gotten in the past have been on this Canon 6D. Shots of Drake, a uh, bunch of concerts been shot on this, bunch of sports. Uh, I've definitely worked this thing into the ground and for anyone kind of looking for a good starter camera uh, to branch off in, into the full frame world, I definitely recommend the Canon 6D. Um, it did the job. Um, and I have no complaints about it and without this camera I don't think I would get many of the shots that I've gotten. So Canon 6D and the Canon 5D are my two bodies right now. Uh, currently filming on the Sony a6500 uh, with the kit lens that it came with. I use that for video and uh, that's pretty much it. Moving on to lenses, uh, we're gonna go with my favorite lens right now. Uh, the Canon 70 to 200. This is the Mark III version. Uh, this thing is my favorite lens of all time. It's a tank. I uh, use this lens throughout the whole kind of Raptors championship run. So all the, the iconic photos that you've seen taken by me have been taken with this lens. Um, 70 to 200, as I mentioned, great focal length for sports. Uh, shooting portraits. Uh, it's a little heavy, so I wouldn't recommend it for kind of everyday use if you're out and about doing street photography or uh, portraits and all that kind of stuff. It is quite heavy, so I do recommend it for uh, sports, concerts. Um, I know shooting festivals in the in the music scene, um, shooting from the photo pit. It's nice to have that extra kind of focal length. So I definitely recommend the 70 to 200 as your first kind of big boy lens to, to purchase outside of your kind of kit lenses and all that kind of stuff. So Canon 70 to 200, uh, one of my favorite lenses of all time. Moving on to the next one, we got the Canon 300mm uh, f4. Uh, the great guys at Free Space have let me borrow this lens. I've been using it for baseball recently. It just gives you that extra kind of focal length that you'll need. I've noticed in baseball, a lot of people shoot with either the 400 to 500 to 600 with the big lens hoods and all that with the monopod. Uh, I haven't upgraded to that level yet, but hopefully in the future I can get my hands on one of those big kind of focal, focal length kind, kind of lenses and just to see where it goes from from there. Moving on, we have the Sigma 35 1.4. Uh, this is my go-to lens when I just have to go out and about, throw on my camera, go for shoots, uh, shooting portraits, landscapes, street photography. It's a great kind of versatile lens. I use it for all all my concert photography and the when I'm shooting in the photo pit. It's a nice wide lens. Um, it gets the job done. Bought it three, four years ago, and it's kind of still held up strong. Uh, little bit of scuffs here and there but like the bokeh on it is incredible shooting at 1.4 is a treat everything is sharp and in focus 
Um, and it's a good alternative to the Canon 1.4 35mm. Um, it's a little cheaper. Uh, definitely recommend this lens for anyone kind of shooting portraits, uh, shooting events, shooting everything. This is my go-to lens for everyday use. Uh, Next we have the Canon 24 to 105 f4. Uh, this was the kit lens that came with the Canon 60. Um, I don't really use it my, that much, but I just keep it in my camera bag just in case I need that kind of extra focal length um, in between the 70 to 200 and in between that 35 millimeter, just in case. But I really don't use it that much. It's not that great in low light, um, so if I, I need to to use it for that extra wide kind of 24 millimeter uh, focal focal range, I'll, I'll throw it on the camera body, but for the most part, this is kind of my least use lens. Next up, we have my flash. We got the Godox uh, V860. Um, I use this flash when I'm shooting events, um, some indoor concerts, uh, per, but pretty much I don't really use a flash that often. Um, I keep it in my bag just in case uh, there's an opportunity that comes up that requires uh, a flash to be used if it's in a low light kind of situation, but uh, flash is kept in my bag, but I don't really use it that much. Next up we have hard drives that I keep in my bag. Uh, this one right here, uh, we got the Western Digital two terabyte drive. I picked this one up at Canada Computers the other day. Uh, what was funny is this one was a lot cheaper than uh, the other ones because of the color of it. So sometimes if you're not picky about color, you can find good deals on these hard drives. I go through a bunch shooting sports, um, shooting all those files kind of things. So you got to find a way to kind of put all your files onto a backup drive and make sure you back up your backup, your backups so you don't lose any of your good kind of shots. Next up, we, I have these kind of two, two pouches that I keep always with me. Um, order th these off Amazon. Um, they're great to kind of keep memory cards and wires and all that kind of stuff. I, I got two SD cards in here right now. In my, in my other one, I got CF cards in there. Um, pretty basic setup. You can just pop in your memory cards and throw it into your bag. Um, I also have this pouch that I keep with me all, always. We got some cables. Um, we got the chargers, we got batteries in here too, um, but it's a great, it came with my bag, um, but it's a great way to kind of keep your stuff kind of safe and uh, protected and you know where to find it when you're in a pinch and you need to kind of grab your gear all together and throw or take out all your gear. So uh, one of these bags came with my, the camera bag I use right now, but it's a good way to kind of keep everything organized in your backpack. Next up, uh, we have power bank, charger, your phone. Uh, when I'm on the field uh, shooting sports, I'm always using my phone to kind of transfer photos and upload photos that way. So it, it's always good to kind of carry a power bank on you. You never know when your phone's gonna die and you don't want your phone to die when you're on the job. Next up, we have this lightning to SD card reader uh, for your phone. Uh, currently I'm working with the MLB now and a lot of the work is done on the fly. Pretty much all the work is done on the fly. So uh, live content you capture, whether it be photo, video, uh, pop in your SD card. I, I cycle between two or three on game day. And basically you pop in your SD card, you can open it up on Lightroom Mobile or even in your Photos app. And basically you can just import your photos directly from your SD card. And it's very convenient and I recommend anyone with a with a camera to get one of these because you never know when you're gonna need photos in a pinch. Rounding out the rest of my camera bag, we got one of these lens pens. Um, I don't really know where I got it. I kind of ended up with it. I don't know if my dad kind of handed it down to me. Um, basically with a little brush on one end and a little kind of felt tip uh, cleaner on the other end, you can kind of use it on your lenses to kind of clean everything up. Uh, along with that, lens cloth. Always ideal, you don't, you don't want to have a dirty lens heading into a shoot, so basically before a shoot, kind of clean up all my gear, make sure it's good to go, and then I don't have to worry about it when I head out there on the field. Uh, to go along with that, I got one of these kind of prisms that I use for portraits and sometimes for sports. 
Um, you can get some pretty cool results with these um, and make your photography a little bit more interesting. I like to use it in sports because you never really see prism photography being used. I know in portraits and uh, street photography they get used a lot, but I like to use it in sports just to change things up and uh, make things pretty creative. Along with my bag, I got one of these Manfrotto uh, monopods, the 290, made in Italy. Um, shooting sports, you kind of need a monopod to throw on one of those heavier lenses or just to keep steady. Um, I throw it on my 70 to 200 with my A6500 and uh, been shooting MLB video with it and it's kind of bringing good. Um, I definitely need to look into kind of uh, buying a monopod with a handle and a nice kind of uh, fluid uh, foot, foot pedal um, just to get that smooth video and all that kind of stuff so stay tuned for that. And to round everything up we got this uh, bag right here, it's a uh, Fengster, um, not too sure where it's from, um, my dad got it for me, um, not sure if it was from Henry's or something like that but it's a great backpack which I can fit all my gear into here. Um, in the front there's a nice pocket, nice and orange inside too, so uh, aesthetically pleasing. On the inside there's uh, different compartments and all that kind of stuff. You can put your laptop in here. Um, and pretty much all my gear fits into here uh, with no issues. It does get heavy with the, with the lenses and the camera bodies and whatnot, but I can't complain. Um, I'd rather have the gear that I need on a shoot uh, when I'm shooting sports. When I'm shooting events, it's a little different. I, I, I rock the one camera body with a couple lenses and throw it into a smaller bag. Uh, but recently, when I've been down in ML, with the MLB for spring training, I brought this bag everywhere. I went with it. All my camera gear in here fits perfectly, and I got the job done. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So that's been it. You saw my gear. You saw my bag. You see all the tools that I use to kind of go into an event and shoot with and get the results that I do. Thank you guys for watching my first video on this channel. You got to see what's in my bag, what I use on a game to game kind of basis, what I use for sports, music, and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, hit like, share with your friends, do all that kind of fun stuff. There's more on the way, stay tuned, and we'll catch you next time.